First of all, today, Chief EU Negotiator Michel Barnier has been holding a news conference at the end of a week of technical talks in Brussels. And Brexit cabinet discussions have been continuing in London as Theresa May tries to find a compromise amidst divisions over what kind of relationship the UK should have with the EU after Brexit. Here's what Mr Barnier had to say about the status of the Irish border. On Ireland, we focused on solutions to avoid a hard border. Any solution must be precise, clear and unambiguous. As you know, our joint report provides for three options. First, solving the issues on the island of Ireland through the future relationship. And this future relationship would need to avoid a hard border and protect North-South cooperation and the Good Friday Agreement. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, it is important to tell the truth. A UK decision to leave the single market and to leave the customs union would make border checks unavoidable. Michel Barnier there. Well, Camilla, he set it out very clearly. Uh, unless there is a UK decision to stay in the single market and customs union, then there'll be border checks. And this comes after, of course, the notion that at the Brexit war cabinet meetings that we've had this week, Northern Ireland was going to be on the agenda and then was taken off because it's proving too contentious. The issue around this is interesting in the fact that no party at all seems to want to have a hard border. The UK don't, the EU doesn't, and neither do the Irish or the Northern Irish. And yet, at the same time, this is the hot potato. There's a wider narrative around this, though, as well, isn't there? David Davis coming out very strongly in the papers this morning, saying that he thinks Michel Barnier has been discourteous in the way that the EU want to handle the transition talks. Um, I think from the general public's point of view, there was some interesting polling in the week saying actually only 8% support a so-called brino, Brexit in name only, and that people generally just want the government to get on with it, regardless of this massive thorny issue about Northern Ireland, yes. there's this sense of not making progress and constantly being blocked by Barnier before we even set out into the next stage of the negotiation. But it, is it on the thorny issue of Northern Ireland and that border? Of course everybody says they don't want a hard border, yeah. but people say they don't want a hard border and Britain would still like to come out of the customs union. Is that going to be the issue that breaks these negotiations? It may well be, and particularly when you have the role of the 10 DUP MPs who give Theresa May her majority in, in Westminster. So it matters more than ever. But you cannot come out of the customs union and the single market and not have a border. They say there could be technical solutions, that there could be ways once the trade arrangement yep. is finalised, because we don't know what that is either at the moment, but once the trade, trade deal is finalised, there could be ways across that. I think the idea is you can have honesty boxes, you might have drones, you might have uh, electronic beams, they don't want to go back to border posts because that becomes very, very hard. There'll be lots of creative thinking, but there is still going to be a border. You will recreate a border by coming out of the customs union and the single market. There's no question of that. And the DUP in Northern Ireland, which remember, Northern Ireland voted to stay in the European Union, lost the overall. But the DUP, vote. of course, don't support no, that. No, they were on the wrong side of that argument. But they don't want the border to go down the Irish Sea, so you can't have a specific deal for those counties and just say those six counties of, of Ireland are, are in and the rest of the, the UK is out. Do you think? that on that issue it may be that the Cabinet and Theresa May will be forced to concede some sort of customs union. Um, they may call it something different, but it may be a customs union in effect beyond transition. Well, the rhetoric from Downing Street dampening all of the speculation in the papers at the weekend was saying we will not be in any customs union. There was this nuance between the customs union and remaining in one mm. and a customs union. They've since been unequivocal about that. To be fair, that's the only chink in the Lancaster House speech armour. While she's completely adamant about the single market, the paragraph, the 12th point about the customs union is open to a bit of interpretation. That's probably why we've been seeing Philip Hammond freelancing on the subject in recent weeks, um, an adverse opinion, we believe, from Molly Robbins uh, within Downing Street, and that's what's making it tricky. Well, it's a war, Cabinet, because it's at war with itself. She hasn't, she hasn't got agreement, mm. has she? So how can you go to the other 27 and Michelle Barney and say what you want when your own side is split? Right, and that's true. I mean, the, the meetings they've had this week, 
there hasn't been agreement, hasn't been resolved because Theresa May has decided that there's going to be an away day. Well, yeah, because of course there must be. Four hours to decide Britain's end state doesn't seem enough time at all. It seems incomprehensible, doesn't it, really, that they've only met for this point of time. Stuff's been taken off the agenda. Meanwhile, we've had Jeremy Corbyn getting himself tied in knots as well over what he has or hasn't said mm. to Barnier and his own own meeting about staying in the customs union. So let's make no mistake about this. Both political parties are divided over this issue. But yeah, an away day is probably not a bad idea, although the notion of some of the cabinet doing team building exercises, the mind boggles. I'd be, well, be amazed if an away day you can get Philip Hammond and Amber Rudd to agree with Boris Michael Johnson. Gove and Boris, Boris Johnson. Maybe it should have been sorted out before Article 50. Or having been opaque mm. in the way that some people might see it, they have managed to get the first phase agreed. There is likely to be an agreement on transition. Um, and they'll get headline agreement around a trade deal. So, yeah. in the end, is it as disastrous as some people are saying? I think it looks troublesome. There's always... Look, there's there's self-interest on the UK side, there's self-interest on the 27. Mm. You're looking for mutual self-interest where you can come together. We've got where we've are so far. One, by agreeing to the 27's timetabling, then two, paying up the £39 billion. And on issues such as Ireland, we gave ground, gave the impression that there wouldn't be that border to get the DUP back on side. Now, th now that seems to be unrolling. Right. It's, go sense, it's going though, back. Like phase one, you know, so much leads up to it and then it's all decided in the last few hours. Oh, that and, happens in and all and nothing is agreed till everything is agreed. agreed. And on that, on that, we will move on.